Hi, I'm Margaret Martin at Miller Guide, and today I'm going to tell you about how K2 helps our bones, our arteries, as well as potentially reducing our risk for Alzheimer's. When it comes to the nutrient K2, first of all, just a clarification that we have different types of Ks. There's K1, and so oftentimes people go, oh, I'm getting lots of K2, and they'll mention to me that they're getting it through kale and leafy greens and that was something I used to think oh k1 k2 it's all a k family well they act actually quite differently so from the leafy greens you do get k1 all things that are essential for good health but k2 is much more specific and we get it from uh, mostly fermented foods whether it's cheeses or a fermented soybean called nato one of my clients who's Japanese did say to me because she grew up with it, it was a very particular taste that she still loves, but that most people she introduces it to find it kind of nasty. So and then people get, well, you know, what about the cheeses? Well, there are some fermented cheeses that are strong, that are rich in K2, but you have to consume a lot of the cheese. So better choice would be then to get it through a supplement. So I'd like to first start about the importance of K2 in bone health. So you get your diagnosis of osteoporosis, you get told, you know, make sure you have your calcium, make sure you have your vitamin D. But you're like saying, thinking right now, no one ever told me to have K2. So what is its role? Well, its role is to help calcium get into our bones. Calcium, when it is broken down, the K2 actually activates a protein that helps the mineral calcium bind to our bones. And so studies have shown that this not only improves our bone density, but reduces our risk for fracture. So K2 is an important nutrient when it comes to bone remodeling. And if you want to find out more about bone remodeling, I encourage you to look at my interview with Dr. Janet Rubin, who is an endocrinologist and a distinguished professor. So when it comes to the health of our arteries, and so many people will tell me, oh, I'm not taking um, calcium because I don't want it coating my arteries. Well, in a book by um, Dr. Goodman, who's a lipidologist, he, his book is titled K2, and he goes on about how the importance of K2 when I said, you know, it's binding with the calcium byproducts so that it's, it's actually essentially keeping your arteries clean so that the, the calcium isn't depositing in your arteries, but rather keeping it in your bones, which is where we really need it. That is a really essential role in K2. Some of you might know my history that my mother passed away with Alzheimer's. So, and for many of you that have loved ones with Alzheimer's, you know, it's always top of mind. Well, there's a paper that just came out 2021 and it's titled Vitamin K2 Holds Promise for Alzheimer's Prevention and Treatment. And so, just know as a bonus that you know while you're keeping your arteries clean and your bones strong that you might also be preventing Alzheimer's. Now another important thing in regards to K2 is when to consume K2. So you know people if they're considered concerned about their bones and general autoimmune health they will take for instance a vitamin D. Well we have several vitamins that some of us will choose to take in our diet and they're all fat soluble vitamins. They are K, A, D, and E. All of these vitamins are fat soluble, which means they compete for absorption. And you're like, okay, so what does that mean? That means we shouldn't consume them at the same time. So you might, you know, have a supplement that has all these great things in it, but you're really wasting your money because your body can absorb as well. There was a 2015 study where they actually looked at the absorption of these nutrients in the intestine. And given three hours apart, they had maximum absorption of each of the fat soluble vitamins, but given at the same time, now you're not absorbing as much because they're competing. It's like trying to get into the, you know, the, into the doorway at the same time. So what do you do about it? Well, what I decided to do about it, and so if this helps you, is I got a senior pack, AM, PM, and so on my AM supplements, I will put my D. On my PM supplements, I'll put my K2. Now, 
just separating them is one great start. But another important thing is to recognize that because they are fat soluble, then your body needs to be consuming more fat to be able to absorb it more. When we consume a fat that has avocado and olive oil and nuts and great fats for our body, then our uh, gallbladder starts to produce bile. The production of bile helps in the absorption of fat soluble vitamins. So that makes it a really um, great way to ensure that the vitamins that you're getting, the fat soluble vitamins that you're ingesting are going to be absorbed. When it comes to K2, you might start looking at supplements and go, hmm, you know, we're reading papers and you know, you're reading about MK4 and you're reading about MK7 going, you know, I'm not really sure about what type of MK, you know, what am I supposed to, these are like subfamilies or subgroups of K2 and both have been studied in regards to bone health. Um, there's a little bit more promise in some of the studies on MK7, but it appears that, you know, whichever type you choose to take, that you will have some benefit of the K2. So a lot of people ask me, how much am I supposed to take? And so I'm not as a physical therapist, I don't prescribe vitamins and nutrients, but the recommendations from Dr. Goodman in his book on vitamin K2 was somewhere in the area of 150 to 180 micrograms per day. And so, you know, as I mentioned earlier, make sure that you take it with food, rich with um, fats, and that you take it separate from your other fat soluble vitamins in order to maximize absorption. So just a word of caution when it comes to taking K2, just like any other supplement, you wanna to talk to your doctor or your pharmacist about other medication you may be on. If you're on an anticoagulant, we know that K2 as well as K1 are important components in coagulation. And so if you're on an anticoagulant, they probably don't want you taking something that's going to increase coagulation. Although having said that, I do know of individuals who have worked with their physicians to ensure that they're getting the benefit of K2 without affecting their anticoagulant medication. And then the second um, caution is if you are allergic to soy products in that the MK7 that is derived from NATO, NATO is fermented soybeans. And so that would definitely be contraindication for you to take um, that type of, of supplement because obviously it's soya based. So just play it safe when adding supplements and different nutrients to your diet. I hope that today's video on K2 gives you an opportunity to reflect on this nutrient, to consider it as part of your daily diet and or your daily supplement regime and that it helps keep your bones strong, your arteries clear and your mind well. I'm Margaret Miller Guide. Thanks for joining me today.